that is the, one of the biggest jobs of, of the treasurer is uh, to be doing uh, exactly that, investing our, our money. And as you said, there's some places where there's not much money left, of course. Uh, our state budget is uh, badly in deficit. We're running up huge debts and have, uh, over the past couple of years, just put more debt on us over the past couple of years than I believe was true in the first 90 years of Arizona's history. A tragedy for um, my children and, and all of our children and, and grandchildren uh, that are here today. But the job of the treasurer is also to be investing in things like our state education balance, which comes from our state land trust. That's about $3 million, and that's their rain or shine. That has nothing to do with tax revenues or whether the economy is going up or down. Uh, and what Arizona is doing right now is put in place, uh, taking about half of that, uh, the investment portion of that, and putting it completely into the stocks of Wall Street companies. Uh, almost no other state in the country uh, does this. Uh, you look at conservative states that are run in a conservative manner, like Utah and Texas and places like that, and what they say is we're not going to put all our eggs in one basket. Because if we do, what will happen to us is what's happened to Arizona, which is we've lost about $200 million of those education endowment investments in Wall Street over the past three years. That's money that goes directly, uh, where that should be going directly to our kids' classrooms, uh, and instead is ending up in these bailed out banks and all these other places. So what I want to do is for the, have a new uh, investment policy that's always changing. We had a new investment policy come in place just uh, about a month ago, end of August. Uh, and I'm going to put in place a new investment policy that put, for the first time in Arizona history is going to put safety first as the number one priority for our equity investments, for our stock investments. And that's not happening right now. We need to make that number one. That has to be the number one priority. And number two, and only number two, is best rate of return. And I think we have to make our, our investments safer, and that means not putting them all in one basket. That means making sure that we're not sending it all off to Timbuktu or wherever else, but think about how we can make those investments safer right here uh, in Arizona as well. Uh, I think Dean Martin put out a press release the other day um, talking about all of the Arizona companies he's invested in. Uh, I give him credit for doing that. I think that's a good thing. We shouldn't be just putting our money into these distant companies. We should be doing what Dean Martin has been doing, which is also looking at investment opportunities here in Arizona as well. In terms of my investment philosophy, I think that there's no doubt that it is, has to be about safety first. If Doug Ducey is elected state treasurer, the philosophy will be safe and solid investments. This is not my money. This is not the legislature's money. It's not the governor's money. This is the money of the taxpayer. And the treasurer is the fiduciary and the responsible banker. And that is the role that I'll play, is to protect those funds. Uh, I think that's incredibly important. Beyond that, uh, there will be two, two yardsticks. The first will be liquidity. And what that really means is there are daily needs in our state government for things that have to be paid for. So you want instruments that can be turned into cash quickly, while at the same time our earning a safe return. And, uh, and the last thing will be about rate of return or yield. Uh, that's my philosophy. It's simple, it's safe, and it's solid, and it will protect the taxpayer. And uh, I also will be frugal with the time that I need, because you don't need three minutes to answer this question. <laughs> with job creation. Uh, throughout the uh, Arizona Republic, we all heard a lot about how the two of you are going to do job creation. It kind of perplexes me. So one of the questions asked by a member of the audience is, uh, what authority does the state treasurer have in creating solar jobs? Have you, has this been something you have uh, said? Uh, yeah, the state treasurer has no authority whatsoever to create jobs. Jobs are created by the private sector. Uh, and it's by business people out there who are creating jobs. Uh, and uh, that's where the uh, state's economic future is, is going to lie. Uh, what I have been talking about is, yep, absolutely. Uh, what I have been talking about is exactly where I left off in, in this last question, which is how can we be making investments uh, that are going to be creating jobs here in Arizona, uh, that are going to help invest in the companies that are growing here. Uh, I, I was talking when I just left off about Dean Martin and, and what he, the list he put out of the companies he's been investing in here in Arizona. One of them is a company, First Solar, 
based here in Tempe, uh, does great work, one of the largest solar companies all over the world, really, and I think the largest in the United States. Uh, I, I think that's the kind of thing we should be continuing, and we should be looking at how can we, number one, as I said before, make safe investments, get the best possible rate of return, uh, but if we can be doing what Dean Martin has been doing, which is looking for investment opportunities here in Arizona, and looking for ways to make that happen, uh, then things like solar make sense. We all know that we need to help uh, strengthen the Arizona economy. That's not just going to happen from government, it's going to happen from the business world and from the community leaders and all those folks. But we've seen the price that Arizona has paid when we put all our eggs in one basket in terms of stocks, but also put all our eggs in one basket in terms of relying on home construction as the only engine of our economic growth. And we are all paying the price for that right now. All these other states around the country, are their economies are already starting to grow, and Arizona is still on the mat economically. So we have to start thinking, how can we start building the economy of the future here in Arizona? And that's going to be things like solar and high tech and biotech, these kinds of industries that are going to be growing, creating jobs for people, uh, being able to pull along the rest of the economy along with them. Uh, and again, there's a role that government can play. I think some of the ideas that have been put forward in the legislature are good ideas. Uh, I, uh, and here's a, a difference between myself and Mr. Ducey, I believe that the solar tax credit that was signed into law by Governor Brewer was a good idea. Uh, I think that that was the kind of thing we should be looking at. How do we help the private sector do what it does best? Uh, and those are the kind of things I think the Treasurer can be doing as well. There's no magic wands here, folks. And anybody who tells you that we're going to get out of this mess economically or budget-wise next year or the year after is blowing smoke up your you-know-what. Uh, but what we do have is some tools. And this is an all-hands-on-deck kind of moment. And we all have to say, what can our role in state government be that we're going to start helping the private sector succeed and help the people out there who are doing their work, who are those small business people, who are those entrepreneurs, who are starting those companies and who are going to be building our future succeed. The treasurer shouldn't be investing in startups or anything like that, but the treasurer can be out there being an advocate and being somebody who's looking for smart investments, safe investments, good investments that are also going to help Arizona thrive. Given that you're a Republican, and given that um, we're supposed to be having a Republican speak this year, everybody thinks it's in the bag, which I think is a little bit pompous. Um, this is supposed to be Republican year, which means we may end up with the same group that sold the capital and raised our taxes, and we are still broke. Assuming they will again prove incompetent, how will you publicize their trip? Thank you, and, and uh, I am the Republican nominee, but I am not part of the Republican Party establishment. I've been an, I've been an outsider politically. I've been active in terms of voting and being a part of creating jobs and part of our business community uh, and, and giving back and being active, but I haven't been part of the Republican establishment. And part of the reason I'm running is I'm completely disappointed in these guys. I mean, in my mind, the ideas that I believe in of limited government, of fiscal responsibility, of economic freedom that supports free market economics, and of personal behavior, a lot of them have not supported these ideas. You know, our, our, uh, our state constitution uh, says that we have to balance the budget every year. Yet look at the tricks and gimmicks that are, are played down at the legislature. It also says that there's a $350,000 debt limit in our state. Our state's four and a half billion dollars in debt. To me, Republicans, conservatives, who believe in limited government, read the Constitution and follow it. And those are the parameters on what government is. The ideas that I believe in are, I believe, at home, or most at home, inside the Republican Party. I have to congratulate the folks in the room here. I really think it's the Tea Party that has straightened out the Republican Party. I've been all over the state, all right? I've been all the way from uh, Winslow to Tombstone to all over Maricopa County, Flagstaff, Tucson. And the Tea Party rooms are the most passionate rooms. They're the most full rooms. They're the best educated questions on what's going on. And there's some people I didn't know five months ago. I, I know them by name right now because I see them. I see how passionate they are and what they're doing. So I'm not going down there to be part of the Republican Party establishment. I'm going down there to get the state headed in the right direction 
And that means going back to these first principles, which are limited government, free market economics, personal responsibility, and having a constitution that is a guide for the state legislature and for our federal government. So um, uh, with that, I do think that the Tea Party will be the guiding light for elected Republicans because the Tea Party holds people accountable and doesn't really put up with any, uh, uh, they like direct answers. At least that's what I've learned as I've gotten around the state and been at some of these meetings. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and that's what we'll have uh, if, uh, if I'm elected. Thank you.